to our guests, we welcome you, and we are continuing in our series, More Like Him. And I know some of you have been walking with God for a long time, and isn't it great to know that there is still more room for improvement if we're willing to look at our lives and see the areas, ask God sometimes to show us the areas where we can grow and be more like him. Amen. I'm on a journey. Anybody else with me? All right. Has anybody already got there? Okay, good. Amen. Amen. I, I, I like what Jake said as he was leading worship. Amen. He's a lot closer than what he used to be. Amen. <laughs> Come on. Anybody feel that way today? We're a little bit more like him than what we were. So our series title, More Like Him, comes from, uh, it's the title of a book that we are also reading together in this fall series by Dr. James Littles, Jr., and uh, we have just been enjoying so much. I know uh, many of you have said, you know, it's a very deep book. In other words, uh, it's not light reading, but I'm thankful that sometimes we can read something that kind of challenges us a little bit to go a little bit deeper. Amen? Amen. So last week, uh, in message two, uh, Diane talked to us about the concept of spiritual formation. And uh, by the way, if you did miss that message, I would encourage you to uh, go online to our website, hischurch.net, or uh, if you have the church app, you can just watch it right on there for free. And uh, it was amazing how she brought out so many things about spiritual formation and why it's important. And it was also uh, wonderful this week as we had 80 people that had signed up for a growth group this semester were able to take that message on Sunday and then go even deeper throughout the week. And so I heard some great reports of people that felt the presence of God in, in their group. Matter of fact, one of them was on the Zoom call. It's like, whoa, you mean you can feel God on the Zoom call? Evidently, uh, yeah, so the online groups, aren't you thankful for the Lord, amen, that he meets us wherever there are people that are hungry, wherever people are desiring him, he shows up, amen. And so that was great to hear those great reports. And today, we're going to continue building off of that foundation of last week as we look at holiness, community, and spiritual gifting. Now, let me start by saying this. I think it's no surprise most people are aware that the church in America is in decline. I'm not talking about numbers or finances, or, but maybe in spiritual power and in faith. But I'm thankful that God, in his plan, had a plan to raise up in the last days a new generation of people, amen, that would be full of his spirit, full of his power, and full of faith. How many of you want to be a part of that group? Amen. I love what uh, Daniel said about the last days. In Daniel eleven thirty two, 32, it says, the people who know their God, will be strong and will resist him. Who's the him? The enemy of our soul. And you know, I think we got to keep in, we got to remember that the battles that we see in the physical oftentimes are a reflection of what's going on in the spiritual. How many of you know that? Verse 33 says, wise leaders will give instruction to many. Amen. We have a mission as the church. Aren't you glad you know what your mission is here today? So the mission of the church in the last days is going to stand with the one who will be victorious in the end over our enemy. And Ephesians 6.10, Paul tells us this, a final word, be strong in the Lord. Somebody say, in the Lord. And in His mighty power. See, that's why we've got to know what it means to be more like him. Put on all of God's armor so that you will be able to stand firm against all strategies of the devil, for we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world, 
against mighty powers in this dark world, and against evil spirits in heavenly places. So today, we're going to talk about holiness, community, and spiritual gifting, because it is so important for the mission that he has given to his church. And so I just want to uh, take, share with you some thoughts uh, about these things. And then again, this week in your small group, your growth groups, you're going to be uh, digging a little deeper. So let me just kind of lay some things out here for our subject material. I want to just kind of break it down this way. There are three things that we must do to be victorious in his mission. Now, I, I, there's very much a mission that he has for your life. There's also a mission that he has for you within the body of Christ. Amen. And there's a broader mission for the church in the last days. And so I want to I just give you three things that we've got to do to be victorious in our mission. And number one, it is we must follow. Everybody say follow. follow. Our commander. Now, now, not just follow his orders, not just follow his direction, but we got to follow his example. Amen. Our, our whole goal is to be more like him. Can you say amen? amen? First Peter chapter 1 and verse 15 says, But now you must be holy. There's that word must again. You must be holy in everything you do. Now, we're going to talk about what does that word holy mean, but let's just read the Word of God. But now you must be holy in everything you do, just as God who chose you is holy. How many of you are thankful that God chose you? How many of you are thankful that we serve a God that's holy? For the Scriptures say you must be holy because I am holy. This is what God said. You're going to be on my team you're going to be on my side in this spiritual battle. I am holy, and you're going to need to be holy. What does holy mean? Because if you really don't know the biblical definition, you might be saying, well, that counts me out right there. Because holy means perfect, right? What does holy mean? The definition of holy, the biblical definition of holy is to be separate. Separate. Set apart. I think it's funny when you read in the Old Testament that the tools that were used around the altar where the sacrifices made, like the shovels and the picks, the Bible says they were holy. Why is that? Well, let's just take the shovel for example. It wasn't just any shovel. It was a holy shovel. It, was, it didn't glow. <laughs> you know, there, there, it wasn't radiant. And so we just said, oh, there's a holy shovel. No, it was a shovel whose purpose was for one thing. So if you're digging something around it in the back of your tent, you don't just go grab the shovel that's supposed to be used for the altar of sacrifices because that shovel is holy. It is separate for that one purpose. That is why that shovel is holy. It is set apart. Don't just use that shovel for anything. How many of you recognize that God said he was going to have a people? There are going to be people with him in the last days that are fighting this spiritual battle with him, and they will be people that are holy because he is holy. There's a lot we can say about that definition, but God is holy, and his people must be holy. We're set apart from sin. How many of you realize it's impossible for God to sin? How many of you recognize that once we are born again, we are free from sin as well? Amen. It is possible because of the gift of salvation that we have received. So that's why he said, you've got to be holy because I am holy. You've got to be separate. You need to understand your mission is not what everybody else's mission is. Come on, is there anybody here with me today? I said, your purpose in life is not the same as maybe somebody that lives next to you. 
Amen. There is a purpose and a mission that God has for you. And there's obviously a lot of distinction within, within the body. Some people are going to, their mission may be specifically in this area, others in this area, but how many of you recognize God has a purpose for you? Amen. If you're born again of the water and the spirit, amen, you are born again into a new life. I'm getting ahead of myself, but, but that's, what it, that's what it takes to be holy. And understand that now that I'm, I've been purchased with the blood of Jesus, I'm not my own. I belong to him. Come on, we got we to gotta make sure and let ourselves, we got to let the world, we got to let the, God know whose side we are on in this battle. Amen? I'm with him. How about you? Amen. I like to be on the winning side. How about you? Amen. I know that sometimes it looks bleak for the church, for God's people. I know there are times when God's people have been persecuted. I know there are times when, 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 when their prayers haven't been answered the way they want them answered. Come on, anybody ever been there? Amen. But I'm telling you, I'm sticking with him. Hallelujah. I'm going to follow him. I'm going to follow his word to the best of my ability. I'm going to follow his example. To the me- That's why we've got to learn who he is, what he is like, what his characteristics are, so we can be more like him. I was talking to someone before service today, and uh, I won't say who because I didn't get permission to share this, but, but I knew of a, a battle that was going on. A, I think it was maybe a little bit of a spiritual battle, but you know how sometimes relationships can kind of get like this with people that we work with? And I said, well, how did, how did it go this past week? Because I knew it was not good the week before. And this person told me, we just hugged it out, Pastor. And I was like, come on, now that's what I'm talking about. That's why we want to be more like him, because we're able to forgive. We're able, amen, to show mercy. We're able to show the grace that God has shown to us, to others, and give people another chance. Forgive. And be the one to start that process. Oh, Hallelujah. Come on, somebody lift your hands and just thank the Lord for his example today. Come on, do you want to be more like him? Amen. Father, continue to show us your glory. Today, striving for holiness means having a relationship with God that's defined by obedience to his will and allowing ourselves, like Diane said last week, to be shaped to have his character. And the potter's wheel is a place of shaping. And like she so uh, wonderfully said last week, the power is in the clay for us to yield. God's trying to form us. And either we yield to that or we're hard to that. I want to be pliable in his hands. I don't want him to toss me aside. I want him to keep working in my life. Anybody else feel that way? Can we just take a moment? If you feel that, just communicate that to the Lord right now. Amen. Father, you know our hearts today, God, and you know our desire. And Lord, we want, God, you to continue working on us so that we can be formed, so that we can be holy. 1 Thessalonians 4, 3 says, God's will is for you to be holy. Hello? How many of you believe the Bible is for all of us? Okay, somebody just got a word right there from the Lord. God's will for you is to be holy, to be separated. Not like the rest of the world, but to know what your purpose is. Your purpose is not just to chase the American dream. Your purpose is you should be looking for a country whose builder and maker is God. Amen? And I'm not saying we shouldn't be patriotic and we shouldn't be law-abiding and all those kind of things. But how many of you recognize the one that made this world said, I have gone to prepare a place for you that where I am, you will be with me. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. God's will is for you to be holy, so stay away from all. Now, we're gonna, we're, the Bible gets plain sometimes, okay? Buckle up. 
Buckle up. Here we go. God's will is for you to be holy, so stay away from all sexual sin. Isn't it funny that, not funny, but isn't it interesting that the same, the same problems that people had a couple thousand ago, you know, we're still having today, right? Yeah. Then each of you will control his own body and live in holiness and honor, not in lustful passion like the pagans who do not know God and his ways. Never harm or cheat a fellow believer in this matter by violating his wife. For the Lord, now, the Lord avenges all such sins. And we have solemnly warned you before. God has called us to live holy lives, not impure lives. Therefore, anyone who refuses to live by these rules, what rules are you talking about? Control your body. Don't live in lustful passions like the pagans, all, all these different things. Anyone who refuses to live by these rules is not disobeying human teaching, but is rejecting God, who gives us his holy, who gives his Holy Spirit to you. Wow. There's a lot in that right there, but how many of you are thankful that His Holy Spirit is available to live in us, to lead us, to guide us? Amen? And I'm going to tell you something. If you haven't felt led this past week by the Holy Ghost, you ought to be concerned. Because I have a newsflash for you. It's probably not because you didn't need some leading. But it might be because... <laughs> Come on, we're gonna, we just got to keep it real here, folks. All right, I, I'm, not, I'm, I'm not preaching down. I'm, pre I'm, I'm preaching to me too right now, okay? Amen. Come on, aren't you thankful that the Spirit of God will lead us and guide us? But you know, if there's been a while in my life when, when I can say, well, Lord, you haven't been leading. Well, maybe it's because I didn't do what he asked me to do last time. <laughs> yeah, okay, well, got to move on, Pastor. <clears throat> All right. I was thinking about Daniel. Now, if you've ever been to Sunday school, you've probably heard the story of Daniel in the lion's den. It's one of the, one of the all-time greats. Daniel was actually, you probably never thought of it this way, but he was faced with a decision of whether or not he would be holy or whether or not he would be separate or whether or not he would continue to live his life as someone that is set apart. Because, you see, King Darius was tricked by all of the people in his, in his entourage that were jealous of Daniel. And he was tricked into making a decree or a law that said that you were not allowed to pray for 30 days to anyone but the king. Now, Daniel, what's he going to do? Well, he's going to decide, do I know who I am? Am I a child of God? Or, or am I just someone living in a land, doing what everybody else is doing and following the guidelines? No, he said, no, prayer is important. Prayer is who I am. Prayer is what I do. I need to talk to God. The king is not going to take the place of God in my life. And so Daniel, when he found out about this decree, he got up the next morning, got down on his knees, and he prayed. Not just once, but as was his custom, three times. He said, I know whose side I'm on. Well, wait a minute, Daniel, didn't you hear? Anybody that violates this law is going to be cast into the lion's den. And Daniel said, well, if that's what happens, that's what happens. Come on, are you with me here today? This is powerful. Come on, do you understand, amen, what it means to have faith in God? Are we living like we have faith in God? Are we walking like we believe in Him, that He is in control, and that whatever happens, even if it means going to a lion's den, we're going to keep our faith and our trust in Him? Amen, because here's what Daniel said. I'm just going to pray. That's what I'm supposed to do. And whatever else happens, I'm going to let God take care of that. Oh, I don't know if anybody's hearing me here today. Come on. We're going to be tested in these last days. Come on. Our, whose side are we on? Are we going to walk with the Lord? Come on. If it becomes illegal to pray, what are you going to do? Amen. We need to understand there are sometimes consequences.
Daniel said, I'm going to pray, and he prayed. It would have been really nice if we could say the story was, but the Lord hid his prayers from anybody being aware of it. <laughs> you know, sometimes when I pray, I say, because, you know, I've always been taught, and I think it's true, that the enemy can hear our prayers. So sometimes when I'm praying, if I'm, I've got something specific, I'll say, Lord, let's just keep the devil out of this one. Just kind of, this is me and you. I don't know. I think God can do that. Amen. But anyway, my point is that didn't happen for Daniel. They found out, and Daniel was thrown into the lion's den. See, I know some of you are still looking at it like the, you know, in Sunday school, the little flannel, flannel graph, and you got the little lion, you know, and he's kind of furry and he's got kind of smiling, you know. We're talking lions here. We're talking about, oh, man. Uh, now, I haven't thought a lot about being eaten by a lion, but backpacking out in Montana, I've thought a lot about being eaten by a bear. We've seen bears. And I don't want to get eaten by a bear. I'm just telling you. I'm, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to help you to relate with this here today somehow. What Daniel did is he said, I know who I am. And I am holy. As God is holy. I'm on his side. Whatever happens, happens. If I have to give my life, I have to give my life. Because I know that I am going to live eternally. You can't kill me. Oh, you're not hearing me today. I said, you can't kill me, devil, because I will live eternally, because I have eternal life in Jesus Christ. Oh, now you might kill my body, but you can't kill my soul. Amen. Oh, if you just kill my body, I'm just going to receive the reward that God has for me. Does anybody still believe this stuff? Come on, somebody make a commitment to the Lord right now. God, I'm going to live for you. Lord, I am going to be holy as you are holy. Oh, I'm in trouble because I'm not moving fast enough here. You know, if you would amen a little bit more. If you'd say, preach it, pastor, we're with you a little bit more, I could move a lot faster here today. Let's, <laughs> let's look at verse 19 of Daniel 6. Very early the next morning, the king got up and hurried out to the lion's den. And when he got there, he called out in anguish, Daniel! Servant of the living God. He, didn't, he was tricked into this. He didn't want Daniel to die. Was your God whom you serve so faithfully able to rescue you from the lions? There's a long pause. If, it, if I would have been Daniel, I would have been just let him. Just, just let it be quiet for a little bit right here. And then he said, long live the king. My God sent his angel to shut the lion's mouth so that they could not hurt me, for I have been found innocent in his sight, and I have not wronged you, your majesty. And the Bible says the king was overjoyed and ordered that Daniel be lifted from the den, and not a scratch was found on him, for he trusted in his God. Oh, somebody hear the word of the Lord today. God is faithful. God is, come on, there is victory when you live holy. I said there is victory in holiness. Hallelujah. Amen. There's victory in it. Now, the book that we're reading has a great quote, and I wanted to just go over that with you. Many of you have the book, and you'll be reading this, but for those of you who didn't, I want you to uh, at least get, a, get this quote from the book. Excarnational holiness keeps working on getting sin out of Jesus' followers. Now, now notice that word, excarnational. It just makes you sound smart to say it, doesn't it? <laughs> Amen. As opposed to incarnational, we have excarnational. Matter of fact, my word, uh, my, my, my office uh, word, Microsoft word, it said this is not a real word. <laughs> but I added it to my dictionary, amen, because I know what it means. Excarnational holiness. Think of it more like the things that are happening on the outer, okay? On the other hand, incarnational holiness joyfully responds to the invitation to God's holiness, sending them back into the world as servants of God. 
They pursue holiness in the inner being. Finances, leisure. Oh, pastor, you're really getting on a lot of stuff here today. Well, I want to be more like him. If you handed your checkbook, well, we don't use checkbooks anymore. If you handed over your debit card record, would the Lord say, holy? How about your leisure? Well, it's just leisure, Pastor. But you're not like the rest of the world. You're set apart. What, what everybody else is doing doesn't mean you need to be doing because you're holy. Oh, it's quiet right now. Relationships, family, other areas of life, they celebrate the opportunity to be more like Christ as they serve on his mission. Amen. Holiness does not earn status with God. You're just becoming more like him. And that's a good thing. Amen? We got to get to number two. Amen. So the first thing we must do to be victorious is we've got to follow the commander. Not just his orders, but his example. Number two, we got to stay together. Everybody say together. Come on. His church, the way, the truth, and life together. But here's why we chose together. Because it's throughout the Bible. Another word for together is community. Now, see, people think that when it comes to holiness, that this is an individual thing. This is personal holiness, right? Well, that, that sounds great until you read the Bible. And there's some very interesting passages. I'm just going to read one. In 1 Peter 2, 9, but the call to holiness comes in the context of his body, the church. For you are a chosen people, not person, people. You are royal priests, or as the King James says, a priesthood. It's more than one priest. A holy nation. God's very own possession. And as a result... You can show others the goodness of God. For he called you out of the darkness into his wonderful light. Aren't you thankful for that? Once you had no identity as a people, but now you are God's people. Once you received no mercy, but now you have received God's mercy. I want you to see holiness is something that we do together. We support each other. We encourage one another. Come on now. We're going to mature together. Now, I remember when I first got this little light came on, this little revelation about this being a process and something that happens in the church. Because when you look at the body, there are people at different levels of maturity. And I remember reading uh, David Bernard's book on the pursuit of holiness where he talked about the apple blossom. Now, we're at the time of season where the ripe fruit is in the apple trees right now. But it wasn't that long ago there wasn't a mature apple on the tree. It was only a blossom. It was only a flower. And David Bernard said this, he said that you can look at that blossom and you would not be incorrect to say that is an apple. Because you know about the process. Oh, it's the very beginning. You see, a lot of times we, we, we if we're not careful, we can see, well, that person's holy, that one's not. But how many of you recognize that this is a process of maturity? That's why when someone, amen, is filled with the baptism of the Holy 
spirit. Amen. At that moment when they are born again, amen, they have a new nature. They are a new creation. And I believe no matter what the externals are or what some of the bad habits have been that they might have to still struggle with a little bit, they are holy. And we celebrate that. Amen. And recognize that it is a process in our life. And David, well, I mentioned that. Author James Littles, here's another quote from him I thought is very good. Holy communities. What's a holy community? It's people that are maturing in holiness. Holy communities, they're together. Do not succumb to excarnational minimum standards. For some people, I'm pausing right here, just leave that up if you would, Ty. But some people think that holiness has a lot to do with just the standards that are really minimum standards. Sometimes we have standards for being in leadership in the church or for singing on the praise team or being a teaching pastor. There are standards that we have to live by. There are requirements, but those are the minimum. And you know what? I don't think we've ever had a standard for someone on the platform that was love your enemies. I don't think we've ever said to somebody on the, oh, it's quiet right now for some reason. I don't think we've ever had somebody on the platform and said, you know what? I'm sorry. Uh, you're going to have to just sit down from being on the platform and being in leadership because you've been really mean to your enemies and you're supposed to love them. That's what Jesus would do. <laughs> okay. Are you with me here? Come on. These are minimum standards. Let's look at what he says. Holy communities do not succumb to excarnational minimum standards, nor do they live anxiously wondering if they can ever measure up to their holy God. Both would be wrong. Rather than trying to earn their own salvation, they freely receive His holiness and follow His leading to live holy. Are you with me? All right, then we'll go on to number three. The third thing we have to do if we're going to be successful in our mission is we must be adopted. Now, we understand the need to be born again, right? Everybody knows that. John 3, 5, Jesus said or replied, I assure you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without, he says, no one without being born of water and the Spirit. Humans can reproduce only human life, but the Holy Spirit gives birth to spiritual life. When you are born again, you are holy because you have a holy Spirit of God in you, leading you. Anybody thankful for that? Wow, 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 wow. Thank God. And for some people that like come to church and they look around and they go, oh, I could never be like all these perfect people. There's not a perfect person here. And, and second of all, amen, all of us are here because we were given a gift. This is not so that we can boast, but it is through faith that we have been given salvation. Amen. Wow, praise God. 2 Corinthians 5, 17, this means that anyone who belongs to Christ, you've been born again, you belong to Christ, has become a new person. The old life is gone. A new life has begun. That means if in adoption cases, in the natural that we would understand, this isn't spiritual. That's, well, it is, but I want you to first hear the natural. So if a judge rules an adoption is legal, that means that the original father no longer has any right, has no say. 
How many of you recognize that when before we were born again, we tried to do what was right? Many of us tried to be good, <laughs> but we found, amen, that it wasn't within us because we were slaves to sin. We had a father, if you would, Satan. But I'm so thankful that I've been adopted. Amen. I'm so thankful that I have a new father. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. That's why, that's why I, I'm thankful that he saved me, but I'm thankful that I've been adopted. Amen. I'm in a new family right now. Amen. I, I've got a, lot, I got a lot of great things around me. Amen. Because of his adoption. That's why when we sing songs like, When I Think About the Lord, how he saved me. Oh, yeah. Praise God. But not just that, he also raised me, amen, to a new life. Oh, somebody thank the Lord for that new life today. Amen, amen. Come on, we need to understand the role of adoption. Romans 8, 15. So you have not received a spirit that makes you fearful slaves. Then when you got the Holy Ghost, when you got his spirit, you, you didn't get a, a spirit that makes you fearful Instead, you received God's Spirit when He adopted you as His own children, and now we call Him Abba Father. For His Spirit joins with our spirit to affirm that we are God's children. And since we are His children, we are His heirs. Oh, now, I, I'll just be honest, I'm still trying to get, grasp that one. But that's what the Word of God says. We are heirs together with Him. <laughs> Help us, Lord, to understand the amazing miracle that you have done in our lives. Not only are we your sons and daughters, but, Lord, we are joint heirs, according to your word. Galatians 4, 5, God sent him to buy freedom for us who were slaves to the law. Slaves to the law means you just can't do what's right. You keep failing because the law, you break the law, the result is death. So Jesus came to buy our freedom so that he could adopt us as his very own children. And because we are his children, God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, prompting us to call out Abba, Father. Now you are no longer a slave but God's own child, and since you are his child, God has made you his heir. So that's Romans and Galatians. In case you think Galatians was just a typo. Amen. But I think we really need to understand this idea of adoption. Now, this is something that maybe will help you. You see, adoption in the Jewish and Roman world served different purposes than what we would think about today if we were considering adopting. You see, in Jewish culture, and Roman culture, adoption was a way to secure your lineage, but not just your lineage, but your business or your empire. Jacob adopted Joseph's two sons, Manasseh and Ephraim. And they now, because of that adoption, could receive the full inheritance of sons. What's interesting is even in Roman culture, of course, many of you studied Julius Caesar, you know about him, but he adopted those that had proven leadership as sons so that they could be emperors in waiting. Adoption. Adoption. Now, if, you can, if, the, if God will help you to see this, you're going to be very excited as you leave this service here today when you understand what it means to be adopted by him. When we are born again, we enter into God's family. He is our father. Our former father's rights have no claim on us. Our identity our mission have changed. And with the infilling of his spirit, 
there are many other spiritual gifts that he gives to us. Now, I don't have time to go into that today. But in your growth groups this week, you're going to talk about what those gifts are. But I want you to stand with me as we go to one final scripture. As we're studying to be more like him, we need to recognize that we have been adopted and that there are spiritual gifts. Every person Oh, I feel his spirit right now. Every person that has been born again, no matter where you are in your walk with God, I feel the Holy Ghost. No matter where you are, you might be excelling, or maybe you've fallen back. But he wants somebody here to know You're still my son. You're still my daughter. Come on, those of us that are parents in this room, we know that there are times that our children please us, there are times they don't please us. But they're still our children. Somebody, the Lord is speaking to you right now. You're still my daughter and you're still my son. And I have given to you spiritual gifts that are not being used for my kingdom. And you will feel the most fulfilled, the happiest, and rewarded when you take those gifts and allow them part of the mission that I have given to you. Come on, somebody. He has a mission for you. There is a purpose for you. Let's just thank the Lord for His Spirit that's moving in this place right now. Amen. Father, we thank you. Thank you that you're still reaching. Amen. Today. Thank you that you're still reaching in this place right now. If there's anybody here, amen, that you know you're not where you should be, you know you're not where God wants you to be, listen, don't think for a moment that he is not ready to welcome you back with open arms. And you know that your life is not what it used to be. Let him restore your joy. Restore your peace. Let him bring you back to the place. I'm not saying walking with God means everything's easy street, but I'm telling you, there is a peace of God that we can have in the midst of the storm. Hallelujah. Come on, there is a faith in God that we can have when things go wrong. Amen. That's one of those gifts. And there are others there are others. Jesus said, I tell you the truth. Anyone who believes in me will do the same works I have done and even greater works because I am going to be with the Father. You can ask for anything in my name, and I will do it, so that the Son can bring glory to the Father. Yes, ask me for anything in my name, and I will do it. Let's lift our hands together right now in the presence of God that's moving in this house. Come on, somebody, just reach out to the Lord right now. Just talk to God. Amen. We're going to take a few minutes and just respond to the Holy Ghost that's moving. Amen. If you want to come up here and pray, you're more than welcome to. If you want to pray at your seat, you can pray there, standing, sitting, however. Just let's take a few moments and respond. Amen. To the love of God.
that is in this place. Amen. The call of God. Amen. That is in this place. Amen. To live holy lives in Jesus' name. Amen.